Good morning, everybody. I am Fire Lotus. This is the Lab Morning Witches Chat. I do these Monday through Friday, um, starting anywhere from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I keep saying that, but here recently they've always started at like 10 a.m. But, anyways, <clears throat> let me go through my introductions and do what I normally do, and then we'll start and see where this goes. Um, for the people that don't know, I'm Fire Lotus. I've been practicing for 16 plus years. Um, I'm a spiritual witch. Uh, I work primarily with my ancestors. I commune with the gods and goddesses. I recognize that they're there, but I do not worship them. Um, again, primarily work with my guides and my ancestors. Um, with that, the point of these lives are to basically just for information and to create a strong knitted community. Um, of open-minded spiritual thinkers. If you are a practitioner, great. If you're not a practitioner, that's also great too, because these videos are also to prove that you don't have to be a witch, or claim to be a witch, or have the witch aesthetic to actually be a witch and to actually practice real magic. Um, but, yes, with that being stated, these are the reasons. Um, I turn these into a podcast, I turn around, and on Saturdays I upload them all to my YouTube page, Fire Lotus the Witch, Small announcement, good morning, um, small announcement, and this is going to be, make it easier for everybody, my Instagram name has changed slightly, it is still Fire Lotus the Witch, but instead of all the, um, underscore, 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 now it is legit just Fire Lotus the Witch, all bunched together, um, so yeah, but now that officially means that, like, all of my stuff should be Fire Lotus the Witch, that way I'm easy to find, but on top of that, um, Oh, shit. That was the second thing. If you hear the cat that you currently hear right now, that is my familiar liquor. He's currently being an asshole. Um, he's not allowed in here, only certain times, uh, because normally he gets distracted and starts knocking stuff over or attacks me because I talk with my hands. So, um, yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. He'll, he'll stop. He'll start back every now and then. On top of that, if you also hear a dog barking at any point of this... Um, I can't help it. It's my neighbor's dog. He's outside. They have sheeps. Yeah. So he barks at everything. Um, but let me start this off how I normally start it off. Um, for anyone who is curious, this is a sage vibrational spray that is charged under the full moon that is made by my amazing friend who I call the Herbal Alchemist. Um, she is the owner and creator of everything. That comes out of this shop but it is three sleepy eyes apothecary um she makes soap sage sprays for the people that can't burn sage or just don't want to burn sage these are amazing it smells amazing and the energy behind them are also amazing she offers shampoo um all natural she just released a conditioner she has herbs she has tea she has tinctures go check her out she's got an instagram facebook and a facebook group and an etsy so, totally check her out. Three Sleepy Eyes Apothecary. Um, I use this, though, during all of my lives and after all my lives and in my magic. Um, it's very good. Also, the last thing I'm going to shout out, by the way, all of this stuff that I'm talking about is not paid. I'm just doing it because that is the point of this. Um, to get anything that I find that helps me, spirituality or in my craft, um, I'm going to talk about it on here. If that is a business, if that is a app, as in... Um, if you've ever wanted a personalized horoscope, uh, download Astro Matrix. It's completely free. You can find it in both stores, Apple and Android or Google. Um, it create it helps you create a birth chart, and with that, it um, basically a birth chart and or natal chart is a screenshot of the sky at the moment you were born. But what that does is it pulls it. It pulls yours, and it breaks it all down. So it's easy to understand it. You get hourly updates. But the reason it's so cool is because literally every single day, you get personalized information that is to do with your um, your chart, your life, your emotions, your everything. Um, it gives you updates on the moon. It gives you updates, hourly updates and planetary updates of what planet just went where, things to look out for, how your energy is going to be. For a certain period of time it's an amazing app and it's all free good morning everybody but um yeah there's that and then again oh 
another announcement. Um, yesterday, the live that I did, or uh, we did, was actually like two hours and I think 20 minutes long. Um, I'm still learning to edit them and to actually break them apart into two parts. Um, so, normally I am on Spotify, but there are two episodes currently. Yesterday was one of them that is not going to be uploaded due to the fact that it's just too large, so I have to edit it and break it down. Um, but, all the other ones and every other one that I've uploaded so far, they are all on CastBox, Fire Lotus the Witch. Um, I also have a YouTube page. Um, a new thing, and this is also for everybody who has trouble finding good information, um, this is a new thing, I used to have it, and then I kind of stopped using it, and then I started back again, Tumblr, um, it is a really, really great website to go and actually look, and do research, not necessarily, like, go on there and find a spell, but to do research, because there are so many different type practitioners on there that constantly post stuff, like, daily, hourly, that you can find so many different uses for so many different, um, correspondences and herb correspondences and there's different abstract ways of doing magic and you can also incorporate that into yours not to mention um create a profile and then just literally make it like your online book of shadows or your online reference also pinterest is another good one too um now again when i say go on there and use uh tumblr or instagram not Instagram, um, Tumblr and or Pinterest. I'm not saying go on there and compare what your magic and how you're doing your stuff to theirs. Because that'll kill your magic. That, no. Um, you need confidence in your magic. Even if you don't have it, fake it until you get it. Um, confidence is key when it comes to practicing magic. Um, and just in general. Um, I, I mean, I'm personally still building mine up. So. Um, but, yes. Um, again, if you hear anything outside or any weird noises, it's probably my neighbors or anything like that. Um, so yeah, but these lives also do not have a, uh, normally they don't actually have a starting subject. Sometimes they do, but, uh, I go over everything, anything to do with witchcraft, magic, spirituality, religion, um, basically everything on the spectrum except for politics. I don't do that shit. Um... But I am just going to ahead and tell you now, I'm a very abstract thinker. Um, but that is the point, and that's one of the other points of these videos, is to make you question everything. Um, and then once you've learned that, question it more. Um, so, yes, but as everyone should know by now, though, we do have an eclipse coming up this Friday. Um, it is a lunar, a lunar eclipse? I think it's a lunar eclipse. No, it's a solar eclipse. Solar eclipse, and I do not think it's going to be visible here in the United States. I could be wrong. Um, but it is in Cancer. So, that's going to be a fun day. Um, that's going to be a very intense emotional day for all you empaths out there. I'm not really looking forward to it. Um, but luckily, primarily I stay at my house. So, I don't have to deal with people. Personally. Like, a lot of people. Um, I went into Walmart the, this past weekend and holy shit. That was the first time I've went into Walmart in, like, almost a year. Um, and needless to say, I will not be going back. I hate Walmart. Um, I should be getting one of the books today. Speaking of that, I should be getting one of the books today. Um, I did not get the keys, so I will not be able to walk to the mailbox, sadly. Um, but I don't know if it's going to be in my mailbox or if they'll deliver it here. Um, I live pretty far away, a good distance away from my actual, um, mailbox, so I don't know how that's gonna work out, but I will say, um, I am going to be finding a new avenue of, um, ways to get stuff, book-wise, craft-wise, anything like that, uh, there was an issue that I posted this on my public, um, my personalized profile, but I don't think I talked about it here, um, Amazon had a mix-up. They had an error in their system, and it, it, it screwed, yeah, our account up. So, I won't be going through them again. Um, at first, I thought it was just because, like, I went through a third party. Because, you know, Amazon now, they're no longer just you're buying from Amazon. They have, like, the third-party undersellers, or however you want to word that. 
um, where you can buy from them too. The only difference is you're buying from that person, but Amazon itself is handling the shipping. Um, but yeah, they messed my account up. So I finally, I talked to them last night. I called them and I'm like, yo, so what, what happened? This is, this normally isn't how this goes. Um, and they're like, well, there was an error. There's an error in our system. We fixed it, but due to how banks are, there's nothing that we can do. You're going to have to talk to your bank. And we don't have a personal, like, bank. It's one of those prepaid bank cards. Um, so, like, there's not a bank that we can physically walk into. But, I mean, it's fine. It'll be caught up and uh, it'll be fixed within a seven-day period. It's just frustrating because the only thing that, like, they're, like, instead of saying, I'm sorry, they're, like, we can offer you a $5 promo. It's not about the promo. It, it's not about, I don't want anything free. I want you to fix your mistake because it's on your part and not mine. Um, and then it, it also, yeah, so, um, that's what I was actually thinking, Walmart, and then, um, the last time I was on Second and Charles, if I read their site right, they have almost like a Walmart to Walmart, to where if I find something on their site that's not necessarily in a store, they can ship it to one of their stores, and I can pick it up, I, uh, may do that, if anybody doesn't know what Second and Charles are, um, it's an amazing store that basically it's like, it's like a thrift store, but slightly more professional, but book-wise, actually, you can get a lot of shit there, um, book-wise, though, they do have a really, really heavy New Age pagan section, let me tell you, or especially the one in Gainesville, um, they have a very heavy one, but all the books, they were previously bought by somebody else. So they're previously used, but they're all in good condition, and they're always marked down. Um, so that's a really good thing. Uh, but I am gonna, I mean, they're still Etsy. Every single time I've ordered from Etsy, uh, knock on wood, I've not actually had a problem with them. Um, I had, I've ordered from eBay, but eBay, to me, it's just, it can be a little sketchy. So, yeah, I'm going to also find locally, but it, again, since I, the agoraphobia thing, and then since I don't drive and my partner does and he works constantly, if I can get a store to ship it in Gainesville, then he can pick it up on his way home. That works better, but, you know, I would love to shop, shop locally, and we do have one or two shops around here that I'm aware of. We have about one or two shops that you... They're not really pagan shops, but they kind of fit that parameter. They're like new age herbal confinement shops. Um, or at least directly near me. Um, other than that, we don't really have that many stores. So, like, online would be the best place to go. It's just you have shit like this. Um, and then not to mention with online, the whole shipping thing. Like, they make some deals look amazing. And they're like, oh, but wait, there's $50 in shipping. Um, so no, but I am excited about the books. I did talk to somebody who actually saw one of these lives yesterday. Um, and they said one of the books that I ordered was great. Um, but I did kind of figure out something. Some of the books, if anybody is curious in these books, um, now I don't know this, so do not quote me on this, but some of the newer folklore um, like, backwoods southern books, like, southern folklore, um, Appalachian magic books, I'm starting to realize that, which one of them is, I actually read the description, I read some of the views, it is hopefully what I'm actually looking for, but a lot of the other ones, especially one of the newer ones that are supposed to be coming out, now, I'm not downing the book or author in any way, shape, or form, um, it's new information, so that's great in general, but they're being marketed wrong, um, they're setting it up and they're advertising it like it's actually, and of course, I put all my books away, but it's actually like one of those books that actually break everything down and they like tell you the core principles and stuff like that. Um, but instead, it's more of like references and like a cyclopedia thing. And that's not what really I'm looking for. Um... Now, I know in Conjuring and Voodoo in general, there are a lot more books that are actually in-depth, and they're not just a reference here, a reference here, a small paragraph, and then a reference here. Um, I don't want encyclopedias. Not when it comes to this type of magic. I want to actually learn what's used and what the correspondence is and all of that. Um, because, well, that that's what I'm 
what I've always done. Um, but here recently in my past years, um, and due to a specific um, celebration that I attended and an oath that was to Patark, blah, 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 I can't talk, um, that I did, and my ears are ringing, but the oath that I took, it was to, it was very funny too, because I didn't understand what I was doing until after I had actually toasted it, um, and then I was like, oh, okay, no way, I'm okay with this, but basically, I made an oath to the old ones to dig deep, to basically do a deep dive into my roots, um, However, however, whichever way that comes, um, so I did. I started embracing and trying to find my original path that I started on, and I kind of, you know, like, lost, got lost in the way. Um, I got to do information and talk to some of my relatives about some ancestors and some past history and stuff like that. Um... I personally still have to do research on this, so this is not, like, factual, but, um, one of my aunts on one of my sides of the family, one of our great, my great, one of my great, 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 way great, um, ancestors, they were twin brothers, and when they arrived here in the United States, one went north and one went south. What's insane is, um, due through last name, just tracing of the last name, um, one of those brothers may be linked to the founding of Masonry. I believe it's Masonry, or the Freemasons, basically. Um, I'm not for sure, so don't quote me on that. I have to do a lot of research, and it's going to be very hard, because there's a huge portion of my, uh, family on my father's side that has nothing to do with me, um, which I'm okay with that, but... You know, actually digging research and doing research on it, that makes it a little tricky. Um, and then, on my mother's side, due to the two people that passed away in my family in the past two years, um, it's kind of... You know what they say, your grandparents, and there are certain family members that are the glue to your family. Like, you know, the family's only together because those people are still here. And when those people pass, it just kind of disintegrates and falls apart. Um, that's what my family did very, very fast. Um, which I'm okay with that because I was basically... I had kind of separated myself from them anyways. Um, except for my mom and a few other family members. Um, but anyways... Uh, I don't even know where I was going with that conversation. Huh. But, um... Oh, yeah, the oath. But I made the oath. So I did, within the past two years, I've done more research into my actual legacy family uh, members and stuff like that. But I also started uh, communing with my ancestors more and started basically only talking and communing with them. So that was my way and the resources that I had um, of digging back deeper into my roots. Because, I mean, what's the best way of digging into your roots? talking to the people that you're trying to research online. Um, and I mean, if you're one of those analytical people, commune with them, whatever comes to you, write all that information down, and then actually go and do genealogical research on um, your bloodline and last names and stuff like that, and then actually, like, put them side to side. Um, I wouldn't do that because, well, I don't know. Um... I would love to do that. I want to do, like, a DNA test just to see what's in me. But at the same time, with the whole, we keep this, we keep that. Um, I did find a website, though, that I do have to check into that I heard. Uh, shout out to the podcast, uh, Three Pagans and a Cap. Um, there's one that they talked about that apparently, once you do it, and they do all the research, and they gather all this data about your name and your family members, um... Once they send it to you, they basically scrub it from their system. So, like, it's not like Google or You Me 23 where they actually store it. Um, slight conspiracy and slight interesting fact. Um, you Me and 23 is a DNA test that came out that YouTubers were pressing heavily um, when they first came out. They were the, that's the people that were advertising it the most. Um, interesting fact, what people do not know, the owner and CEO of that company, good morning, it'll come in time, um, the more you commune with your ancestors, the more that, 
I guess, like, you're talking about the path that they were on or the path that you're supposed to be on. With that, it'll come to you. Um, you'll start doing things in your practice, and then you'll eventually learn that, oh, wait, that's how it's supposed to be to begin with. Um, but back to the conspiracy thing, and it's not really a conspiracy because it's actual factual. The owner of You, Me, and 23 actually married the, uh, I think it was the son to the actual family and the creators of Google. So, think about that. You, Me, and 23 now is officially basically merged in with Google. So, not only is Google the powerhouse that it is now, but it's basically now keeping records, genetic records of everybody that put that through. Um, what that's for, I don't know. Um, they could be saving it to where if there was some natural disaster, then, you know, they had DNA to repopulate the world. Um, or they're going to create clones of us and take us out and insert the clones to create the perfect race. I don't know. Um, little conspiracy part. As you can tell, Licker is not happy right now. Um, or the new nickname he has is Loki because he's... I have to video... I have to videotape how he is. Hush! You're not dying! Go look out your window in the living room. But, um, yeah, I don't like the fact that, like, somebody could keep my DNA. Um, and then not to mention Yumi23 and I think Ancestry. There's only two or three DNA websites that once you submit your DNA, if at any point in time a federal agent were to walk in or the police were to walk in and say, hey, we have a subpoena, we need their blood, we need their sample to run in a thing, they will hand it over. Um, but there are a few companies out there, you have to check into it, that will not, under any circumstances, hand over any of your genetic DNA to any type of outside source. Um, and again, now that's what I talk about on here too, I'm very conspiracy, I kind of, I've converged everything together, um, but it, it works, and it's very, it's very funny how nobody else, or a lot of other people haven't really connected a lot of this shit together. Um, but who, let me tell you what it is. Um, update on a video, though. I'm still debating if I'm going to do the video that I'm planning on doing. Um, throughout the year, or throughout me doing these, I've been, um, releasing subtle hints about some snakes that are in the public eye in the pagan community, or what I would consider snakes, but that's also my opinion. Um, and I also encourage you to do your own research. But, um... It's very weird. But I'm still debating. I'm still, like, tugging that back and forth if I'm actually going to do it. Um, because that's not really the point of these videos. Because I'd feel like I'd be calling somebody out. And I don't actually have physical proof. Just by the senses and the things that I get. Um, so I may do that, but not in a public way like this. This is a little bit too public. Um, and, you know, everybody has their own thing. Everybody has their own tribe, their own family. Um, and that's fine. Like, I, I'm pretty sure not everybody out there agrees with what I'm doing right now. Um, but I'm also doing something different than everybody else. I'm not here to teach you necessarily things as much as I'm here to get you to question the world around you and to question everything when it comes to magic, when it comes to spirituality. Like, I'm the type of person that when you come to me, even if you're a teacher and you were to come to me and be like, okay, well, this is why this, this, and this, this is why those things happen, or this is why you use these in the craft. I'm going to look at you and be like, okay, why is that? Or why can't this be used as a, instead of this? And through that, I've learned so much. Um, there are difference depending on the path, as in like hoodoo, voodoo, conjure, um, traditional magic, um, or traditional European magic. Um, if you were to look at the correspondences herb-wise in magic use, they're extremely different, or they can be, and that, for some reason, I never thought about that. Um, and it also proves, because I've looked back since knowing that, I've looked back on some of the other things that I've actually kept notes on, and what I used those herbs for, those correspondences were actually that, but I'd been told before by previous practitioners, well, you can't use this herb for that because it doesn't work, and then I was like, and now knowing what I know now, I'm like, wait, that means it can work, because you could go to grab an herb, say you were trying to go grab rosemary, but instead you grab cinnamon, or you grab tobacco, 
Um, I didn't know tobacco can be substituted in spells and curses as um, any poisonous plant. Uh, did not know that. Well, what? Um. Oh my god, liquor, stop! Hold on. This only happens a few times, but he's actually, like, scraping up under the door, and I know if I don't get up and go let him in, he's going to do this constantly. You're not going to go wild in here, buddy. Okay, sorry about that. He's being a little male cat. He's got a girlfriend outside. So it's his... He's he's officially an adult. And you just had to come over here, didn't you? Come on. If you'll lay right here, you'll be fine. Yeah, but you actually gotta lay here. Yeah. Say hey. Say hey. He's a pain in my ass. Um, but... Anyways. Um... And I've also realized that, you know, getting back to my path and how I've been doing things recently, I've realized that listening to the first instinct that comes to you, that's what you're supposed to do in the craft. Um, no matter if you have a teacher. Now, if you do have a teacher or a mentor or anything like that, I'm not saying directly, like, cut them and undermine them. That's not what I'm saying at all. Because if you're on a specific path under a specific set of, you know, guidelines then by all means, don't listen to me because you pick that path, you do that. But if you're not on a path or if you're in that moment of like, oh shit, what do I do? For one, if you are a sprout, um, for the people that don't know that is the term for newer people, um, I don't like using the whole baby witch thing. Um, it's very undermining. Uh, anyways, if you were very new, um, no matter your age, I would definitely not suggest getting in a coven right away at all. Um, because, yeah, no. No, 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 no. You need to do your... I would literally, honestly, unless it is a family coven, unless it is a straight-up family coven or anything like that, um, I would not suggest joining it yet. Uh, I would suggest doing your own thing for a few years before you even think about joining a coven. Um, now... What I mean by that, if you have a public coven and they do, like, ceremonies and stuff, then by all means, go and explore. But don't join the coven. Um, if you do, as excited as you are going to be to show off all your witchy things and your or your book of shadows or spells that you've done, be very, very careful with what you talk about, what you show other people that practice magic that you do not know. Um... And especially go on the vibes. Now, I'm not saying be paranoid of every single witch out there, or every single person that practices magic. That is not what I'm saying at all. For one, your body and your spirits and your ancestors are going to know right away. But, um, people can also have things on them, like, say, astral parasites or spiritual or in energetic inner things, that negative things that could possibly attach itself to one of your objects or you. Um... I'm not saying that's that's always the case. I have seen it before. Um, I myself have had issues with uh, I astro project or assuming I astro projected, um, and I got a little nasty on me. And yeah, they're they're a bitch to get rid of. Um, but yeah, it's for example another thing that like I cannot stand and that needs to stop. That I personally believe it needs to stop in the pagan community um, because it kind of shows a bit of. Not really educating yourself, or educating yourself, but only going in it with one view. Um, if you're going to research something that you're new about, um, but you've been told things about, when you go to research it, you cannot go in automatically setting aside. You kind of have to be, like, um, unbiased, or biased, yeah, unbiased. You can't be biased when you're doing research, because, um, I'm pretty sure I can find another book, but there's a book, Psychic Vampirism, um, or the Psychic Vampire Codex. That would be my cat knocking stuff over. Hold that thought. See, this is why I don't let you in here while I'm doing my life. Go play. Go. You better go. 
he'll probably be back. But, um, I don't know if I could actually find a full-on book, but I know there are plenty of in uh, videos and everything else out there. But, when it comes to psychic vampirism, in the pagan community, or in the witch community, um, a lot of the percentage, they look at people like that as parasites. They look at them and they automatically outcast them. And if you actually did your research in a non-biased way, aka on both stances, you will realize that they're not parasites. Um, there are multiple theories behind psychic vampirism, but basically the simplest way to explain it is um, everybody's body creates our own energy. It helps create energy. It produces energy. Um, and people, like, say, with depression or bipolar, for example, like me, no, I'm not saying everybody who has depression and who is bipolar is a psychic vampirism or anything like that. Um, but I'm using that as an example. Our bodies do not naturally make chemicals like they're supposed to, like a normal person, one who doesn't have depression. Um, depression is basically a lack of chemicals being made, the right happy chemicals being made. Um, you have to think like that when it comes to people that are psychic vampires. Their bodies, for some reason, do not produce the right amount of energy that their actual, the physical vessel, our bodies, need to continue. So they wind up, what do you do? You take it from the outside sources. So a lot of the people, or a lot of psychic vampires, and I literally do mean a lot, um, there are processes through it because, for one, a lot of them don't even know what they're doing. They don't know they are one until somebody comes to them, another one comes to them and be like, Yo, you're a psychic vampire. You know, this is why all these things happen. This is why you, you know, there are multiple different types, too, as well. Um, there are some that feed only on, good morning, there are some that feed only on emotional, um, what I mean by emotions um, fights, or, uh, happy, it could be any, any range on that emotional scale, they feed from that, so during happy celebrations, like birthdays or weddings, they would love to go, um, the people that feed legit just on, like, um, just energy, and the basic means by that, um, if you live in a city, for example, city, um, raves, clubs, stuff like that, it's a free-for-all, because what, it, it's one, building and you're constantly having positive energy dancing you know letting yourself free um in one place so for a psychic vampire that huh. but uh once now and then you also have the other place you have you have some psychic vampires that are awake it's what it's called um that they know what they're doing and they don't care they're they're feeding off everybody they're feeding off whoever the fuck they want um and you know he's their own and then you have the people that only do, they have, like, specific people that they feed from. Um, for example, I've dated somebody who was, what I call, was a free fall. Um, and what that is, is basically this person had the unique ability to where they could pull just endless amounts of energy. Um, and it was like a waterfall. It was just flowing. Um, and then you have people that just, like... So, yeah. Um, but a lot of people, they consider them parasites. They consider them, like, scum of the earth, basically, due to the fact that they're unwillingly take or willingly, taking somebody's energy without their consent. Um, but, like I said, if you actually did the research, for one, uh, the author that I've talked about her before, I'm not gonna try to pronounce her name, just go to Google and type in the Psychic Vampire Codex. She, crea she created two books. The Psychic Vampire Codex, which breaks everything down about psychic vampirism. She also created another book, though, that um, one day I will be getting my hands on, which is just primarily working with energy. Not being a vampire or a psychic vampire, but actually working with energy. Um, so, yeah, like, that, that, that needs to stop, because especially in the pagan community, we of all people should not be ostracizing or judging anybody on their craft due to the simple fact literally being a witchcraft kind of goes against being a witch is like one of the most not saying this is the reason people are witches but it's one of the taboos of in a lot of cultures even in the 20, 2020 um it's still look not necessarily it's either looked down upon it's frowned upon or it's feared or a mixture of both um, I know a lot of the times, I grew up in Alabama, and I moved a lot, 
So I grew up in, I've lived in cities, I've lived in towns, I've lived in specks on the map that are supposed to be a town, but in reality, legit, you blink your eye and you're, it, you just missed it. Um, a lot of the people that used to judge me um, due to the fact that how I dressed or due to the fact of the pentagrams or the uh, pentacle, whatever you want to call it, um, they were, for one, uneducated in it. Um, they were told that it was Satanism or, you know, all this other. And it's so funny that we keep, that the pentagram, I understand it because of the Satanic Church, um, which everything about this, if you actually do your research, it's a mind fuck. Okay, so let's let's slightly break this down for people that don't understand it. Hollywood also had a very heavy influence behind this, but most people um, who are uneducated or educated by Hollywood will look at a pentagram and automatically assume you're a Satanist. Now, though, you may get the actual just witch, but a lot of the times, especially in the South, you're a Satanist, right? Okay, so for one. That's the upside down cross. I mean, that is the upside down pentagram that does not actually stand for or represent Satan in any way, shape, or form. The only reason that pentagram is linked to Satan is because of the satanic church. What is more mind blowing is the statue that they actually have to represent the satanic church is not a Satan. I mean, it's not Satan, it's Baphomet. On top of that, the actual satanic church doesn't actually worship Satan. On top of that, Satan is a Christian concept. So how the hell am I going to worship Satan if I am a witch? Which goes against everything in Christianity, unless you're a Christian witch. Um, so like, and that's what I don't understand. I'm like, you... Like, Satan in general is a Christian concept, yes, in other different religions and other different paths. You probably do have some type of male force and or female force, Lilith, depending on how you look at her. Um, that is kind of the source of all evil and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, bullshit. Um, but, and even in, even in the Bible, if you, if you actually read the word of the Bible... It states that Lucifer is one of the most prettiest things to ever exist. He is gorgeous among ever even the angels himself. He was gorgeous. He was the most beautiful thing on earth, right? And then all of a sudden, the whole war rebellious, he tried taking over heaven, everything like that. He gets thrown into hell, and then somehow we get this horned um, goat feet, goat head, half man, half horn, depending on what virgin, uh, version of it, of Satan, you get. None of that makes sense. Where the fuck did the scale comes from? Where'd the horns come from? Where'd the little pitchfork and tail come from? If this is a gorgeous creature, explain that. And then if you really want to look at Christian concepts, and if you look at the story of Satan in the Christian aspect and the angel of Lucifer, I know Lucifer, uh, Lilith is not evil. Trust me, I know. She is not. But in Hollywood and in some paths, she is considered more darker. And then Christian people consider her evil. Um, but trust me, I know she is not. Um, I have not personally worked with her at all. But I respect her a lot. Um, liquor, will you hush? Hush, I brought you in here and you turned around and looked at the door and tried to get out. I'm not doing the whole in and out thing. It doesn't work. Go play in the living room. Or go stalk your girlfriend in the kitchen window. Um. Yes, apparently King James. Again, I don't actually, like, I haven't broke the Bible down. Or I, I didn't memorize the Bible. But if you look at that story, in a way, everything... Satan stood for, um, or Lucifer stood for, theoretically, that's kind of what the world is now. Not in the evil aspect, though. He wanted free will. He wanted to be free. He didn't want to take over and all this other shit. He just saw that the system that was in place right there was not perfect. And what do you do? He went against the Almighty Creator, and the Almighty Creator threw him to hell. Um, and now he takes care of all, I don't know, I don't want to say demons or anything, or evil things. I mean, he takes care of lost souls. 
Um, again, it's all perspective and it's all concept, but I don't know. There's a lot of like, wait, this is very contradicting. And then a lot of people like Pan, for example, um, uh, I had to educate my partner. Um, he automatically thought due to some people that were linked to Pan, um, he thought that, you know, he's this evil, evil goat man. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, I've never worked with Pan, and I believe Pan is kind of like Loki, I believe. He's almost like a trickster, but I know he's not evil. Um, he, I guess he could be used, which almost anything could be perceived or used as evil. Um, evil in itself is just, honestly, that's also in the eye of the beholder as well. Hello! Um, but yeah, like... I mean, we don't really have, I haven't come across somebody that would like, yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, they're all, arch... when it comes to like, when people are like, you know, you're a Satanist, like, I don't understand that. The, if they actually did their research, the entire reason the church, the church of Satan has everything that it has, it was due to the creator, basically. That was the creator's way of telling the Christian church or the mainstream church to go fuck yourself. Like, I'm going to be rebellious against everything that you stand for because your entire system is fucking corrupt. Um, and that is also one of the reasons Satanism, or the Church of Satan, has got such a big movement. Um, if y'all haven't seen the documentary Hell Satan, it's actually a really good fucking documentary. Due to the simple fact, the drama that they had behind the statues and everything, I completely understand it and agree with them. Like, in federal, at federal locations, we had the Ten Commandments, and it plainly states in the Constitution, separate church and state. You are having... The Ten Commandments statue being there, even if it was donated or not, or the pictures that were hung up, or the giant statues, donation or not, you are still mixing church and state by having that there. And then they're like, oh no, well it's just to, you know, say, in God we trust. Okay, well if the United States is behind Christianity, or the reason it was there to state that, well then... Doesn't it make sense to also have other statues of other different cultures and relig or other paths or religions or spiritual paths that are in the United States due to the simple fact that we are the United States, the land of the freedom? Would it not make sense to have a section on every federal place in the United States to have a small section to where there are small little statues or statues or something that represents all the paths in the United States? Like, something that would represent Wiccan and witchcraft in a whole, or magic in a whole, and then Satanist, and then Buddhist, and then Judaism. All of those, why not have it there? That way it's showing everybody that, you know, all freedoms, all beliefs, all religions are welcomed here as equally. But no, they didn't state that due to the fact that everybody that is in office, primarily everybody that is in office, is something to do with the church, or something of a Christian or God faith. Um... And due to that, he was like, okay, well, if you can have the Ten Commandments statue there, then damn right, we're going to have our statue here. It only makes sense. That was the whole thing about all of that. If you watch the documentary, it explains that. It has nothing to do with actual Satan. It has nothing to do with blood sacrifices. It has nothing to do with eating kids. Um, or any of that bullshit that Hollywood has spread out there. Now, am I saying that there are not people out like that? No. Fuck no. There are some crazy ass people out there. Are there some people out there that are on their own little paths? Um, but, I don't, I mean, I'm pretty sure now the Christian concept of Satan, they have created, um, due to the fact of how long they've had people fear him, I am pretty sure now there is some type of entity that actually answers to Satan. And the reason I state that is because you have to think, if you have an archetype, or if you have a deity, um, or a concept of a deity, um, that has so much emotion put towards that, whether positive or negative, over a certain length of time, that in itself is going to cause and could create in itself like its own entity. Um, for example, 
the boom in technology, I honestly do believe that due to the simple fact that we use them so much, there is some type of, um, some type of weird, like, techno god, um, due to the simple fact it's new, and in a, some ways, if you think about it, we do worship technology, I mean, almost everybody loses their shit if something goes down and doesn't work properly, um, and I mean, I remember when there was a point where we had dial-up, and like, fucking, it took forever just to load one page, and now we get pissed off if it takes less than a minute to load a video, um, but I do believe that now, and then the old demons and everything like that, see, when it comes to demons, the Christian concept, or a more religious concept of a demon, I don't agree with that, um, which I also haven't fully, like, read into just straight up demons yet, I haven't really studied demonology yet, I, I know a little bit about it, um, I mean, demonology, for the people that don't know, it is literally the study of demons' names, um, in order to gain control over a demon, or believe, in order to gain control over a demon, you have to learn its true name, once you learn its true name, you can basically bend it to your will, or at least control it, um, but, at that, what makes a demon a demon, like, because I also believe that when we die, we kind of lose that, this earthly ties in a way, that, um, humanness, that thing that only us humans have, you know, have, um, but at the same time, I do believe that there are some people, or some things, um, over time, like, if, if a person does certain things over and over again, depending on how messed up it could be, it could taint, it, not taint, but it could, like, poison scratch their soul or however you want to word that to where that that negativity that they carry through life could follow over into the following life and that in itself could create something that is a negative entity and then you also have things that are just older just older than concepts it's older than our ability to understand the concept um let me make sure I'm not forgetting. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, and it it it's just so weird that and see that's something I'm also struggling with because like I've had people in my life and in my past that I hope and pray that like, however, whenever they do die and however that happens, I hope and pray if they are in a spiritual, they don't come anywhere near me. Um, and see, that's where, like, that's the reason that I started stating that where, like, I am just spiritual, due to the simple fact, if you ask me what magic is, or if you ask me what being a witch is, you're gonna get a different answer every single time. It's still gonna be majority the same thing, I'm just wording it differently. Because every day that I wake up, I learn something new. Every day that I wake up, and the more research that I do, the more I'm like, oh, well, see, I said that yesterday, and now that doesn't fit me. But see, that's the point of spirituality. It is learning. It is growing. It is, um, and it's also, uh, collecting. It's basically, it's what that, you know, if, if something doesn't fit me, then it falls away. But being in the craft, you have to realize, and you always have to remember this, that not everything is going to be the same. So you may wake up one day, and you may have been following a path for a year and a half, and you wake up one day and you realize, oh, wait, this doesn't feel right anymore. So there will be changes. It, it doesn't mean you did something wrong. It doesn't mean that you upset a spirit or ancestor or a guide. Because when it comes to working with that, I also wanted to state that. When it comes to working with ancestors or guides, um, especially gods and goddesses, now depending on the person, they'll probably give you a different thing. But I truly believe that, for one... I wouldn't make a promise to them. I would not promise you were going to do something unless you know for a fact you can do it. Um, but with that, I mainly mean that not to like kind of like separate people, but if you have depression or anything like that or bipolar, um, like I do, I've promised a lot of, or I've promised things before and I woke up the following day and it was just, I couldn't do it. 
Um, and I used to, like, torture myself, beat the hell out of myself mentally because I'm like, well, you just didn't do this, you lied, so now all this stuff's gonna happen. And I realized that that's wrong. Um, now, with that being stated, if you make a promise, what I mean by that, if you make a promise that you're going to do something, like you're going to do a certain dedication to your ancestors, gods, goddesses, whatever you follow, and then you blow it off to go to a party, or you blow it off to do something like that, and per intentionally just blow it off, that's different than what I'm stating. What I'm stating is if you do have something that, if you do have some type of health thing, that to where some days you're good, other days you're down, the gods and goddesses realize that. They understand that. The ancestors understand that. They understand that we live in an imperfect, perfect world. Us humans are perfectly imperfect. Um, and they realize that. Like, if not, then we would be gods because we would be perfect. Um, and even as witches or practitioners or however you want to word that, we're not perfect. Um, nobody is ever going to know everything there is possible unless we get to a point to where we can put a chip in our head and download shit. Then you may be able to at least download all the knowledge, but with the craft, it's not just about having knowledge. You have to put forth that knowledge into actual practice, into actual physical things. Um, but, I mean... And my craft has changed a lot. Uh, there's a lot of things that hasn't changed. Um, and then there's some things that always will stick with you. Oh, I hate when coffee gets cold. Um, I don't know how these coffee mugs, these particularly like white bland coffee mugs, I don't know how the hell these were popular at one point in time. Because they don't keep your shit warm at all. But that's also why I have this. Yes, people. <laughs> this keeps it warm. That cup doesn't. I shouldn't be drinking coffee. Hmm. But this is slightly different coffee. This is like instant coffee, so... It's not as intense as the other coffee. But, um... Like, with that coffee example... There you go. Perfect thing. You can use coffee in your craft. And you're like, well, what do you mean? Uh, for one, it's a great thing, and if you wanted to, if you have any type of garden, or, and what I mean by that, because that is one thing that will be working here, um, I'm hopefully going to actually create a garden this year, and I learned something very cool about pallets, let me get to that in a second, but, um, with your coffee grounds, or leftover eggshells, or leftover cuttings and stuff like that, get a coffee can, Preferably a tin coffee can, um, which it could rust, so a plastic one could do too. But um, put your coffee in there, your leftover coffee stuff in there. You can either do that, or um, if you have any type of like flower bed or anything like that, when you get through or at some point through your day, dedicate that and put it back into the earth. And how I do that is if I donate anything um, to... Uh, not donate, but if I honor or offer it to anything in nature, um, and it's food or it's something that can break completely down, I basically state, go back to the, uh, earth that which I came. Um, and that's basically my way of saying, you know, thank you, you've served a purpose, this is me giving it back to you. So going back in, doing the cycle all over, the spinning of the wheel, the circle. Um, but you can also use dried coffee, to sprinkle on your candles, to sprinkle over your spells, coffee, um, different types of coffee, but primarily like espresso, if you had espresso, or if you had a blend of coffee and espresso, and you were doing a spell, and you wanted not necessarily like an instant result, but you kind of wanted to speed that process up, you can add coffee to it, and it'll help speed it up, um, ancestors also love coffee, um, if you do give any type of offerings and you have any type of fae on your property, do not give them chocolate. Do not give fae chocolate. Um, and if you do have fae nearby, unless you're purposely trying to keep them out or anything like that, um, don't offer them anything with iron. They like shiny things. Um, actually... I will, uh, talk to a friend because I believe I gave it, uh, I gave... There's a book, it's by Llewellyn, and it's one of theirs, it's like the Spell-A-Day Almanac, um, 
but it is the, uh, oh, what is it? I think it's the monthly planner, but it's broken down into the four elements. Um, and this particular book, it has, I have never worked with, um, I hadn't really worked with Faye before, um, anything to do with Faye, uh, except for when I was younger, like, literally just now getting into it, one of the first real things that I did, um, and I was serious about was, they had this recipe, it's a fairy godmother spell, the spell itself works, it's basically a wish spell, it works, but what you have to create to do that, I took that and added to it, and basically what that is, it's called fairy dust. Um, it is basically a mixture of dried flowers, um, roses, um, dried flowers, what is it, dried flowers, sandalwood, um, glitter, and there's something else. I'll have to see if I can get the actual, um, See if she can snap a picture of the page and send it to me. But, um, it, it smells really earthy. It is a very earthy, musky smell. It smells amazing, honestly. Um, and you put glitter in there because, uh, they like shiny things. Now, if you don't like to use glitter due to the fact that we just found out that it's actually really bad for the environment, um, I would suggest you could do leaves, like confetti. It's not really going to be shiny, but it would be... Um, but you can also offer them shiny things, like little bitty bells, or, um, little bitty shiny stones, um, you can offer them that, but basically this particular spell, you, um, you create the, the fairy dust, you create this little landing pad, so you basically get, like, this little candle holder, and put, like, little moss, and, you know, create it however you want, and then you get a, uh, candle, and at the bottom of the candle, you carve it a little bit about, put the fairy dust in it, and then you, um, sprinkle it on the top, and you burn it, and you say this incantation, and it's a wish spell, basically, but I loved it because I had that one specific, like, small little spot, I had one outside and inside that, um, so I guess I have messed with art, I have worked with the fae before, um, but let me tell you, once you open that door, there will be tricks that get played. Um, nothing too serious, I don't believe, unless you offend them. Um, you can get fairy, uh, fairy shot, fae shot. Basically, it's where you piss a fae off and you randomly get sick or you randomly get a cold. Um, I'm not really going to talk about that much because I have to still do more research on it. One of my old roommates mentioned it to me because we had a um, gnome that lived in our room. There was this old, old stump out in the yard where I used to live at the... Um, the house and before I lived there before me and my partner moved there our roommate's landlord ran it over and apparently it pissed the gnome off so like there was this piece of wood that was on our back porch that led out of our room that we lived in um or out of our bedroom and he told us he's like do not whatever you do don't bring that inside and don't put it on the ground like leave it there it's it's the gnome he may come inside sometimes but you know you don't fuck with him he won't fuck with you basically um, I gave him, uh, L or beer on full moons. Um, I would pour it on a little piece of stump that was left over from the stump that got ran over. But, um, my partner, he didn't know it, and I think he threw it out. Or somehow the stick got moved out into the yard. And we walked back inside, and then went outside a few hours later, and it was back up on the porch in the exact same spot. And then there were moments in that room where, in our bedroom, where the cats, for some reason, would just go crazy. Like, not like they're scared or anything, but, like, they were really energetic, and it was like they were chasing something around the room. It's very weird. Um, but I totally believe that. Like, I do believe that there are certain entities, fae, or however you want to say that, that are naturally there on in your house or on your land or anything like that. Um, I know we have, ele uh, not elements, sprites, I guess. I don't know what we have here, um... One of the first times I worked a circle here, um, it was me, my partner, and two other people, and I looked up from opening the circle, um, and I looked up, and right above our house in the tree line, there was a, a ball of light like this, and it was almost, it's very weird, because it was like, the light itself was like pulsating, but it flew, and it went like, 
behind a branch, it came out, and then just flew into the tree line, and then it just went away. And for some reason, though, it was just, like, the most awe-magical moment I think I've ever had. And I don't know why, I don't know what was so special about it, but it was just it, how everything that had happened in that rite, and that ritual, and then that, and it was just like, it, yeah, um... I don't think anything else like that has happened here. Um, there have been a couple of times where, like, we can't find stuff. And, um, actually on Archer Road, my old property that was haunted, we would do that, actually. Uh, we had, we had all types of shit on that property. And, uh, if we couldn't find something, I'd look at my partner, he'd look at me and be like, Alright, what'd you do? I'd be like, what are you talking about? He like, you, obviously you pissed them off somehow. Um... They also, a great offering for them would be, I read, butter and honey. And what you would do, or just plain on butter, um, but try to actually get, like, butter and not, like, that genetically spread, oil spread thing. Um, you just get a couple of pieces of butter and, like, get a leaf, get a, two or three leaves, and, like, put, like, a piece of butter on it and put it in a tree or a bush or however, wherever you want to, and just, like, announce that. Um, I would preferably do it vocally. You don't have to do it very loudly, but just be like, you know, state your purpose. Like, here, this is for any fae or anything on the land spirits that would like it. Here you go. Um, and you'll start to see results. Like, you'll start to see stuff around your house. If you start working with your land and the entities or energy on your land, you will start to see things. Like, you know, you can, they can help a lot. Um, Yeah, I haven't had a garden in a while. I don't think I've ever had a garden, actually, a full-on garden. Um, I am excited, though. Uh, my aloe, the three aloe plants that I have, since I brought them inside, they have shot up, and they are growing so much. Um, so I'm actually thinking about keeping them, just giving them, getting them a better pot, um, but actually keeping them inside because they're doing better inside. But on Christmas Day, I... Um, discovered and collected and currently growing um nightshade or what would be known as american nightshade um and i'm very excited very very excited about that um i don't know what i'm gonna do with it um but i am currently slowly starting a poison collection kind of a poison collection um i already have my, uh, dead garden. I have a garden of dead things. Of dead insects, bones, and stuff. And then I'm also going to have a, uh, small collection of, um, what would be known as poisonous and or, um, not rare, but, uh, some of the darker herbs. I just want to have it just to have a collection of them. Um, my friend, uh, the... Three Sleeping Eyes Apothecary. She's got some. She's got one or two that she's dried out. She's gonna give me, and I'm not going to actually say what type of flower that is until I can actually get it and show it. Um, but just know that like none of it is going to be for like personal use on myself. Um, I'm not that knowledgeable on herbs or anything like that. Which that also leads into um, something that y'all should look into but not try. Um, please, dear God, don't try it. Uh, flying ointment, and what they are. Uh, that's a very interesting thing. I didn't even know those were a real thing. I heard about it in a book, um, but I, I didn't know the book was actually real. Uh, but there used to be, that's also where the whole flying on a broom thing came from. Kind of, that's part of the story. Um, but, uh, um, it's really good. They are really good. Um, I do know, actually, though, two companies that do make them, um, and it's actually another plant that I'm going to hopefully be getting my hands on, I actually found out through him, um, the Kratom plant, uh, for people that don't know what that is, I'm not really gonna break it all down, it is a plant out of, um, off the coffee, it's in the coffee family, um, there are many different types. But, primarily, it has got a boom uh, within the few, I would say, past, well, this past decade, actually. Um, but, it, 
it does multiple things. It can affect people in different ways. I've done it. It's helped me out. Um, my partner has taken it for the past four years, I want to say, four or five years. Um, it's what I used to make at the store that I used to uh, work at. But the reason it's so cool and one of the reasons Big Farm went for it, um, and it is currently, or I believe it was currently banned in a few states. Alabama was actually one of those states that it got banned in. Um, UF, uh, University of Florida here in, uh, in Gainesville, they have a pharmaceutical, uh, part of their college, so they study stuff. They actually started studying what Kratom does in the brain, and this is fascinating because it almost works like cannabis does. Kratom has this unique thing to where it attaches itself, it can attach it once it's in the system, um cannabinoids, noids, noids. Anyways, it has certain properties that it connects itself to the opiate receptors in your brain and it cuts those receptors off. So for anybody who was going through, who was addicted to opiates or um, methadol or anything like that, who had had trouble with it, they started using it because what it does is, due to the fact that it shuts off that part of the brain, people that were withdrawing from the harder stuff Kratom eliminates the withdrawal process. And on top of that, uh, there are so many... Kratom is, in a way, like a miracle drug. For one, there has not been a single death directly because of Kratom. There have been incidences recently to where the media and FDA kind of, like, tweaked what it was actually about... As in, those people had died and there were Kratom in their system. But they could not prove that Kratom was the actual cause. And I know this for a fact due to the simple fact, if you take too much Kratom, you will puke your guts out. Um, but for the people that have fibromyalgia, um, for the people that um, have anxiety problems, it, it works. Um, it can work. Now, for the people that do have bipolar, since I have bipolar, the only thing that I will state, because with the Kratom, um, depending on how you take it, it can affect you like a sedative, and it can affect you like an, um, a stimulant. But it's all natural, so it is a natural thing. But I have realized with bipolar people, um, or with me, once it starts to wear off, and kind of stop working, it kind of, like, it'll make you really tired, but other than that, it is a cool herb, but, um, I plan on actually getting one of those and trying to grow it, um, and then with the palettes, that's what I wanted to talk about, and this is a cool idea for anybody who doesn't have that much space, but you still want to garden, um, the wooden palettes that you can get, I saw on Facebook the other day, and I'd never thought about this, but you can use them as a flower bed, um, they're already sectioned, so you can turn them upside down, pack it with the right soil and stuff, and you can grow certain vegetables like that. Um, I'm hopefully going to build at least one to two raised garden beds, um, and how I want one, I want one that's going to be vegetables, a few vegetables, and then I want the other one to be just herbs. Um, and then I'm also going to do, last year I tried, uh, I think it was last year, last year, the year before last, I tried to attempt, I got um, the boxes, springtime's coming up, so for everybody who loves flowers, um, if y'all have never been to Florida, Florida has this thing with wildflowers, they actually on the sides of the road and like the departments of the road where like they have concreted off, um, but it's in the middle of the road, the islands, they actually, every spring, they'll plant wildflowers. So, there are certain points where all Florida roads, they're just booming with different colors and different, um, but, and that's their, that's Florida's thing. It's, it's beautiful. It's fucking gorgeous. But, um, Dollar General sells boxes of mixed wildflowers. And they're really simple because all you do is just, and I, they're a dollar to two dollars, I believe. Um, but you basically just germinate them. You make sure they're wet, make sure they stay wet, and then boom. Um, what I originally planned on doing or tried to do with them was um, where my circle was. I want to, hopefully I can do it this year and actually get them to do it. But I want a ring of flowers 
on the outer circle of my circle. Um, which I have to do. There's a lot of stuff I want to do outside this year. Um, to get stuff better situated. Because, uh, due to the storm system that hit our house, um, a lot of the coverage that we had, because all the oak trees over our property, they all grew together in, like, this canopy. So, like, our house was hidden from above and then from the lake view. Um, and the only thing that I have to get used to here is due to the simple fact we're on a lake, if I walk outside to my fire pit, I'm exposed to everybody on the lake. And I'm not used to that, especially if I'm doing a ritual. Um, and then due to the fact that it damaged a lot of trees in my next door neighbor's yard directly next to me, um, they, or she basically, all the oak trees that had been here for fucking years that got damaged instead of keeping them, um, she cut them all down. She cut, like, ten trees down. So, her entire fucking yard now, except for two trees that are close to our house, is basically completely open, which means three neighbors down can see our property. Um, so, yeah... Um, and they already think I'm weird because one summer for like two months I was here just me by myself so I would go out at nighttime, burn, uh, have a fire and have a few beers and listen to pagan music and I had a little speaker. So a lot of pagan hymns and pagan songs got blasted all over the lake. Um, but you know nobody complained. Um, not that I don't think anybody of them would have walked up to me and be like yo turn it down. Um. But, yeah. But I am excited about uh, growing that particular plant. Um, I'm excited about getting my hands on the Great Tom. Because I eventually want to grow Wisteria. I want to get a Wisteria plant. And I want to grow um, Weeping Willow. Um, but that's also our house. I think I've shown it on here before. But our lake, our lake front right there next to the shore. Ours is the only yard that's not prim cut down like all the natural herbs and our weeds and plants that naturally grow on the river i mean the uh lake shores here we leave it like that so and that's just because we're in nature like if you don't like nature don't move out in bum fuck middle of nowhere like don't come out here changing things around here for you to like it. That is not... That's that's what the city and the suburbs and shit like that's for. Don't move out to the country and start changing everything and changing the environment. Because we have more wildlife from the lake. Um, turtles. Um, we actually haven't seen a full-on alligator, but we do have some. Um, we hear them at night. Uh, we have the sand hill, the sand hill cranes that are... For Three generations now, for three kids of them showing up on our property with three young ones, uh, three different seasons. So, like, but they always come on our yard because it looks natural. They have places where they can still hide, and it doesn't look, you know, all prim, cut, all that shit. Um, it drives me crazy. It completely drives me crazy because... Sorry about that. I knew that was going to do that. At certain point, and it's 11-11, would you look at that? Um, at certain points of the month, my phone, for some reason, tries to download the live, or while I'm doing these lives, it always interrupts it and pauses it and says that your internet, your internet storage is low. Um, so, yeah, which I'm also out of my, uh, I maxed out my data. But since I live out here in the bumfuck middle of nowhere, there's not many other providers of the same phone. So I have excellent service. I'm hoping this is going okay and it's not too choppy. Um, but, yeah. And I've learned, actually, uh, earlier last year... Sounds so weird. Um, in October... Okay, now my phone's just going completely fucking weird. I'm having apps stop left and right. But, um... Last year, I found an herb, and that is right, and it's an actual herb. Uh, Native Americans used it as a substitute of tobacco for smoking, 
But I gathered it, not knowing what it was. Um, I did try to identify it. Uh, this is not the best way because I do do more research. But Google Lens, to where you can like scan things, it can pick up and identify herbs and plants. Like you may have to still do extensive amount of research to make sure that is the right one. But it has been very, very good at and handy at doing that. So FYI, there, witch tip. Um, but I collected it, and I'm like, I don't know why, but I I think this would make, like, a really good incense. Um, and holy shit, I can burn a little bit of it. Uh, grind it down and burn a little bit of it. And it is a mixture between sweet grass and almost sandalwood. Like, it is a very, very sweet, sweet, soft smell. And I can burn it in here in my craft room, and within 20 minutes to 30 minutes, you will smell it in the kitchen. Like, it fills the entire house. And then, for the longest time, I'm probably going to butcher this, I forgot that I had... Um, sorry about that. Uh, but I forgot that I had petroleum. I think that's what it, um... Uh, I probably butchered that wrong. But anyways, um, I know I butchered that name. But it smells really good. So I mixed those two together and I have the perfect calming incense now. Like it automatically just calms you and like zen. Um, and again, that naturally came to me. Um, there are a few other herbs that I do have to check on that grow out here. But look up, like, try to actually look up, because, like, mugwort, for example, mugwort naturally grows in Florida. Um, what is there? Yarrow, um, blue vervain, um, interesting fact, blue vervain actually, most of the plants or flowers that you see on the edge of the road, or, um, the edge of a four-way or a dirt road, the reason those plants, a lot of those plants or flowers, if you look at them, the reason they stand or their correspondence is for protection is because they grow at the edge of the road. So back then, when people saw those brilliant colors, basically the yellows, the orange, the blues, they knew that's where the road ended and, you know, it was no longer a road. So, it protects them. It was a way of nature, in a way, I guess, it, like they thought of it, it was a way of nature saying, hey, here's the road. So, that's one of the reasons those flowers, or flowers that grow, like vervain, for example, it grows, nine times out of ten, you're going to find it on the side of the road. Uh, most people would call it a weed, but um, it grows on the side of the road. I didn't know that. So, a lot of the flowers you're going to see in springtime, now again, do your research, of course, but... A lot of the flowers that we state are flowers, or modern day states is like flowers or weeds, they're not actually weeds. They're fucking plants that either have a medical and or magical purpose, or at least they have a magical purpose in the craft, or witchcraft. Um, or any other type of, or however you want to word that. But, um, and I realized, like, the best thing I would suggest, if you are curious about doing that, um, try to find a field guide for um, medical herbs or edible plants and herbs in your state and or, well, yeah, state uh, or relig region. Not religion. Sorry that keeps pausing. If that does keep pausing like that, um, my phone's acting very weird right now. So that's either a really good sign, or that's really a bad sign. I guess it all depends. But uh, they have a few field guides that are colored. Um, I know they have a lot for the South, and here in Florida uh, especially they have some. But um, with that, like there are some plants. Like with me, I've collected plants just to give as an offering. Um... Now, there are some witches and or practitioners that state that you should ask permission from the plant um, before you take it. 
Um, that's a 50-50 with me. Uh, I try to. I won't vocalize it. I'll do it in my head. Like, you know, hey, I'm... I, basically, a lot of the times, I'll state my purpose. If, if I am harvesting a plant, I will state my purpose of the harvesting to that plant. Wait a second, a couple of seconds, and, you know, collect it. Now, there have been a few times that I've done that, and I started to collect something, and I just got this weird vibe, and it was like a no, so I didn't collect it. Um... But to each their own. Um, a lot of people, there are some practitioners that also, they will not, like, if they're making a wand, they won't go out and cut it from the tree themselves. They will actually try to find something that has naturally fallen, that has been given by nature to create that as a wand. Um, another thing to look out for, too, because I did not know this, mistletoe. Um... I know in the southern states, I don't know anywhere else, because I haven't really lived that way, I've only lived in the south, um, mistletoe is a type of, um, fungus that trees can get, it's a parasite actually, it's considered a parasite, so if you look up, actually this is a perfect time to do it too, um, if you look up in the trees, they grow in these round little ball of bushels, basically, it's like this little round bushel of them, this condensed, and the reason you can tell it's mistletoe and not the part of the tree is because it's a different type, it's a different color green, and it stands out among all the other things, especially if the tree itself is like has no leaves due to the simple fact it's fall. Uh, this particular, the mistletoe itself, will actually still have leaves. Now, it is, it can be toxic if eaten. Um, I believe it's also toxic to pets. So, you know, be safe, be an adult when it comes to that. Um, when it comes to harvesting and collecting that. Now, if you do harvest it, I don't know if it, like, releases spores or anything. So, like, you could potentially be bringing that well as well to your property. And the reason it's a parasite is because it actually gets onto the tree and then it grows into the tree or starts growing on the tree and using its nutrients. So it is taking away from it to grow. But, um... I did not know that, and there are some places in the southern states, I don't know if they're still doing it, but at one point in time, you actually, they were actually, they were wanting it. That was, um, back before, though, that would have been, um, in December, but if you are in the southern states, you know, when everybody starts collecting pecans and stuff like that, some people also collect mistletoe, um, because they can return around and sell it. Um, but magic-wise, mistletoe, holy shit. You should totally check it out because it's a really good herb to use. Um, and like I said, almost everything you have in your house that you use on a regular basis, you can use for magic. Um, now, I don't know about using like ketchup or anything like that. I mean, theoretically you could. Um, I mean, if there if something called for tomatoes, I guess. I don't know. Um, but... Uh, Salt, pepper, charcoal is a really good thing. Um, I did not know charcoal, natural charcoal was used in hoodoo. Um, I did not know that. That is the very thing. I also, uh, I was doing some research on some hot foot powder. Um, and I also had, I came across a recipe that had sandalwood, red sandalwood in it. And I'd never heard of that before. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what hot foot powder is. Um, I also learned last night there are multiple different uses for it but hot foot powder is basically it's a mixture of um pepper chili pepper um the recipe that i i know uh the first one that i learned was um salt preferably black salt if you're using it to mainly banish somebody um black salt chili flakes uh chili flakes cayenne pepper um and uh regular black pepper and you mix that together you write the name that you're trying to banish out of your life you write their name on a piece of paper and you um burn that add it to the ash and then put it in the path that only they will walk over or walk through and once they do that that is basically they are walking out of your life you're banishing them out of your life be extremely careful with that, because anybody else who walks in that path with that powder down can also have the potential of you will be banishing them from your life. Um, there are a number of loads of other different things that you can use that for. I did not know that. I learned it last night. 
Um, I mean, I knew that, like, almost everything that you can find like that, most things that most people would consider negative in the craft, uh, a lot of the times you can find a positive alternative to that, or, like, the, you know what I mean, light and dark mixture. Um, I mean, not mixture, but light and dark balances out in a way. Um, like, there are also certain stones that you can only work positive magic for. Blue Obsidian, that is one of them. Blue Obsidian, you cannot use that stone in a negative way or a negative concept. It won't work. Um, I think it's only the one of the only few ones, because there's only a few ones that do it like that. But, um, yeah, uh, I think that's going to be it for today, though. Um, yeah, because uh, I am trying to keep this one under two hours. Hopefully, we haven't hit two hours yet that way i don't have to keep postponing uh the podcast but with that being stated um i know i still have to update the um do a list of the shows that i talked about yesterday i know i still have to do that um if the book gets delivered here today i will do a live if my partner brings it when it is delivered um later on tonight i will do a live um, and it literally will just be an unboxing, um, if it comes in the daytime, then I will probably will, like, kind of look it over it, but if not, then it will literally just be a very short live of me opening it up and kind of showing it, um, and then I will be reading it. Um, so yeah, but, uh, I think that was all, um... Yeah, for anyone who does see this, uh, again, my Instagram name has changed. I took out the underscores, so now you can find me on Instagram at Fire Lotus the Witch, one word. Um, this will be a podcast, or turn into a podcast later on tonight, hopefully. Um, and Saturdays, I will be uploading videos to my YouTube. Check out my YouTube, though, because here shortly, I will be starting to make shorter videos of just witchy tips and other information. Um, oh, yes. Before I go, I almost forgot. Today, I will be going over the ninth card in this deck that I'm breaking down. And today is North Wabus. North. Spiritual Connection, Completion, and Wisdom. Let's see. Where is the book go? Found the book. <laughs> Aha. North. A time of great knowledge is upon you. You will have a newfound sense of purpose and an inner confidence about yourself and your abilities. This confidence does not come from a place of ego. Instead, it has developed over time with the patience and inner work on the part of the seeker. The North card represents a sense of acceptance and your gifts and the willingness to share them with others. The sense of the North is the winter suggesting you... The season of North is winter suggesting that you have been reached... That you have reached some form of completion bringing you to a place of peace. Your connection to the divine continues to grow and the spiritual aspects of your life take on new meanings. Synchronicity... Prayer work, meditation, appreciation of nature, compassion, and wise counsel are all aspects of the North Card. Purification occurs subtly within those, the individual thread that connects us to the, the network of creation. The state of enlightenment takes us on the color of the rainbow warrior. Lead and learn and accept the difference between receiving information and receiving true wisdom. And the prayer or the affirmation that comes with these. Um, spirit, pow spirit powers of the north. Let me recognize the wisdom and the honor of touch touching the sacred space. Help me to have the courage and conviction to wear the colors of the rainbow warrior. Purify my body, mind, and spirit through my connection to creator. Wow. Um, I liked that one. The rainbow uh, warrior. So there you go. Today, be that rainbow warrior. Um, and also a signet, uh, sign that at some point in some aspect of your life, you have come to a completion. Um, you have completed something. And with that 
like it stated, um, the state of enlightenment takes on the colors of the rainbow warrior. Learn and accept the difference between receiving information and receiving wisdom. Um, kind of explains my videos. Kind of. Um, I love that though. So, like, today, if at any point in time you're going through it or if you have a thing, and visualize just rainbow energy, like, circling around you. And just always know with that, too. Always know that your ancestors or your guides um, and or your guides, they're always around you. They are in front of you. They are behind you. They are beside of you. And every other direction in between. They're always with you. And you are never alone. So, use, I mean, some of your darkest moments, they're always there for you. Um, you may not feel it, you may not see it, but deep down inside, you know it. They're always there for you, and all you have to do is vocalize. All you have to do is take that first step of vocalization and putting it out there of saying, I am willing and I am willing to receive whatever you have to say to me or what you need to say to me. Um, and over time, as long as you keep practicing with that, you will learn how to communicate and how to receive those signs and how to read them. Um, so yeah, with that being stated, um, thank you everybody who has came or who has stopped by to see this live. Thank you for all the people that are constantly here every single day. Um, and yeah. Uh, that's gonna be it for today. Um, I will be back at this tomorrow morning. Um, same time, 10 a.m. May start a little bit earlier. I don't know. Um, but 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and yeah, I'll be going live. Podcast will be posted a little bit later. And I may do one or two videos to go on my YouTube today. So you should totally check those out. Um, and yeah. That's gonna be... Oh, wait. No, 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 no. One last thing. Um, I have to do this because if not, you know. Um, I am self-promotion. No problem. That is why I'm here. I love doing these. As much as these videos help y'all, trust me, this helps me too. So much. But, um, I am offering services. Um, I do custom spell work. I do oracle readings, tarot readings, intuitive readings. Um, I'm even gonna try to start some type of intuitive counseling possibly like life counseling i don't know um that's kind of new but yes um dm me uh i work on a sliding scale so tell all your friends if any of anybody needs any type of services i work on a sliding scale which basically means um i will work with you um so yeah and anything that is donated to the page or any services that are um bought all or anything type financially or any type of donations that come through or to this page basically goes back to the page and goes back to this community by advancing our knowledge and or getting stuff to continue doing these podcasts and i mean these videos lives and podcasts so yes without further ado i hope y'all all have a magical morning noon or night because i don't know your life i don't know if you're coming to work going to work getting home i don't know but I hope y'all all have a magical day, morning, noon, or night. Um, and I hope to be seeing y'all shortly today, hopefully soon, to the uh, for the uh, book unboxing. Uh, but yeah, without other ado, I hope to see y'all tomorrow. Peace. And it won't pause.